world news tonight. Tunnel nightmare. Indian workers remain trapped for nine days straight as fears loom for their safety. New laws. Biden's approval ratings plummet to the lowest level of his presidency in major national surveys. Tweet fallout. Tech mogul Elon Musk announces thermonuclear lawsuit as advertises PX. Lantern animals. France's National Museum eliminates normally discreet animals into giant replicas. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. A very good evening and you are joining us for World News. We begin this week's broadcast in neighbouring India. The India Tunnel nightmare stretched to its ninth day today. Rescuers are trying to send cooked food and set up a phone connection to 41 workers trapped in a collapsed tunnel in the Indian Himalayas as they explore fresh rescue plans after previous attempts stalled. Indian officials have warned that 41 construction workers who have been stuck inside a collapsed tunnel for over a week could be trapped for several more days as various rescue efforts have failed so far. Fears for the health and well-being of the workers continue to mount, having spent almost 200 hours confined inside the dark tunnel cavity in the state of Uttarakhand. The three-mile-long road tunnel, which was under construction in the Himalayan state, had collapsed in the early hours of last Sunday morning after a landslide in the mountainous area caused large amounts of rubble and debris to block the entrance. Officials had previously said the number of people trapped inside was 40 labourers, but that was later increased to 41. Though authorities had assured the public the labourers would be rescued quickly, the operation has now moved into its ninth day as the machinery and rescue have been hindered by heavy rubble and unstable terrain. Bhaskar Kulbe, part of a specialist team from the Prime Minister's office, said that five government agencies had now been brought in to the rescue operation. However, he warned that it could be another four to five days before the men could be reached. A large specialist drill was flown in from Delhi, but the operation was stopped last week for safety reasons after a loud crackling noise was heard. The National Highways and Infrastructure Development Corporation warned that there was a strong possibility of further collapse. The government said a new five-point plan was now in place, which involved drilling into the tunnel from three directions, including vertically and horizontally from either side. New roads have also been constructed to bring up more machinery to the site. Constant oxygen and Compressed food packets of chickpeas and dried fruits have been funneled to the men through a small pipeline, which is also being used for communication. An operation is ongoing to insert a larger pipe into the cavity so that bread and fruit could be passed through to the workers. However, medical experts warn that the longer the rescue efforts went on, the greater the threat to the health and mental stability of the trapped labourers. Doctors on site last week had warned that some of the workers had been complaining of nausea and headaches. Now on to the unravelling Rohingya crisis. Indonesia has received several hundred Rohingya asylum seekers on the nation's coast. However, the Indonesian authorities have asserted that the country is not obligated to facilitate the incoming refugees. A United Nations agency confirmed that three boats filled with more than 500 Rohingya refugees have landed in Indonesia's westernmost province in one of the biggest arrivals since Myanmar launched a military crackdown on the minority group in 2017. The mostly Muslim Rohingya are persecuted in Myanmar and thousands risk their lives each year on long and expensive sea journeys, often in flimsy boats, to try to reach Malaysia or Indonesia. United Nations Refugee Agency Protection Associate Faisal Rahman told local media that one boat had arrived in Aase province's Biruin district with 256 people aboard, while at least 241 others arrived in Aase's Pidia region and a smaller boat carrying 36 arrived in East Aase. He further stated that of the 256 aboard the Biruin boat, 110 were women and 60 were children. According to Rahman, it was the same boat that local had pushed back out to sea, leaving it stranded off the coast for several days. The latest arrivals mean more than 800 refugees have landed in Aceh province this week. 
the Rohingya boats were docked on the beach in Beeruin after the refugees had disembarked. The refugees were being held at a temporary shelter while awaiting a decision from authorities on their fate and were mostly in good health. Without elaborating on the matter, Beeruin Regional Secretary Ibrahim Ahmad told reporters that the refugees' cases would be handled by other institutions. Hundreds of Muslim Rohingya have arrived in Asse province in recent days, continuing a migration which has for several years seen Rohingyas escaping from Myanmar to Muslim-majority Bangladesh or by rickety wooden boats to Malaysia and Indonesia as well as Thailand. Almost one million Rohingya are living in camps in Bangladesh in what UN High Commissioner for Refugees Filippo Granti described as the biggest humanitarian refugee camp in the world. Indonesia's foreign ministry said that the Southeast Asian country has has no obligation nor capacity to accommodate refugees, let alone to provide a permanent solution. Jakarta is not a signatory of the UN Refugee Convention. Moving on to Israel Hamas war updates. The Israeli military released video footage showing Hamas tunnels under Gaza's largest hospital in its latest evidence to back claims about Hamas's hidden command center. This comes as the IDF says it has captured more than 100 Hamas operatives to gain intelligence while an agreement is reportedly closed in hostage talks. The Israeli military on Sunday released a 3-minute, 27-second long video showing an exposed tunnel shaft at the Al-Shifa hospital in Gaza City. The video, which was shot last Friday, showed an underground tunnel extending downward from the shaft opening. As the camera makes its way down, a set of spiral stairs are visible with walls of the tunnel appearing to be made of vertical slabs of concrete with an arched concrete roof. The Israel Defense Forces say the tunnel shaft extends 10 meters underground, with the tunnel itself continuing for 55 meters. However, Hamas and hospital officials have repeatedly denied that the hospital is anything other than a medical complex. The IDF also doubts Sunday that its forces had captured more than 100 Hamas operatives, ranging from rocket unit members, sniper unit members, explosives experts, and logistics officers. The Israeli military, along with Israel's intelligence agency, said that some of the captured include those that took part in the October 7th attacks. It added that through interrogations, it had received information, the locations of Hamas underground tunnels and weapons depots, and details of operational methods. Meanwhile, after the Palestinian Authority said Israel manipulated reports to justify Israel's attack on the Gaza Strip, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu denied the claims, calling it absurd. The comments come as Tel Aviv-based Haaretz newspaper said an Israeli police investigation into a Hamas attack on the Nova Music Festival on October 7th showed that an Israeli attack helicopter had killed some of the attendees. According to the source, the Israeli combat helicopter fired at Hamas fighters and other Palestinians who crossed through the border fence from Gaza into Israel, but also fired at some of the Israelis attending the music festival. The Israeli police says its focus is on police activity and that it has no information on military action. The White House on Sunday claims that negotiators are getting closer to an agreement with Hamas to release 50 hostages in exchange for a temporary ceasefire and Israel allowing in more aid, including fuel. Citing two sources familiar with the matter, a written draft agreement is being passed between parties. As for the length of the ceasefire, the source said relevant parties are leaning towards six hours per day for four days, with the possibility of a second phase of hostage release. Yemen's Houthi faction had said it captured an Israeli ship in the Red Sea and took it to a Yemeni port. Israel said the ship was a British-owned and Japanese-operated cargo ship. Ship tracking data from Refinitiv Icon on Sunday showed the location of a cargo vessel, Galaxy Leader, in the Red Sea after the ship was seized a day earlier by Iranian-backed militants in Yemen. Yemen's Houthi faction on Sunday said they'd captured what they said was an Israeli ship and taken it to a Yemeni port. A statement from the group said, quote, We are treating the ship's crew in accordance with Islamic principles and values. But Israel said earlier the Iran-aligned group had seized a British-owned and Japanese-operated cargo ship with no Israeli owners or crew. The Houthis, an ally of Tehran, have been launching long-range missile and drone salvos at Israel in solidarity with the Palestinian Hamas militants Israel has been battling in the Gaza Strip since October 7. 
Last week, the Houthi leader Abdul Malik al Houthi said his group was also targeting Israeli vessels. Israel claims its Arrow missile defense system, seen here in footage released by the Israeli military, had shot down missiles flying over the Red Sea. Asked about the seizure of the Galaxy leader, a U.S. defense official said, quote, We're aware of the situation and are closely monitoring it. Latest U.S. election updates on the road to the White House now. With only a year to go until the 2024 election, President Joe Biden has seen the lowest approval ratings of his presidency and is behind the light Republican candidate Donald Trump in almost all recent major national surveys. A number of recent national surveys showed former President Trump ahead of the incumbent president by between 2 and 4 percentage points. This is the first time Trump has surpassed Biden in the majority of national general election polls and it's also a rare moment in history for an incumbent to be behind in a pre-election polls. The polls found that Biden's support largely eroded among Democrats who believe that Israel has gone past the line of its military action in Gaza as well as among voters 18 to 34. Among this age group, 70% disapprove of Biden's handling of the war. back. Residents of a retirement village south of Camp Belltown, Sydney, Australia were forced to watch as flames from a fast-moving grass fire closed in on them. The fire came dangerously close to several properties and even busy roads. The edge of the Hume motorway at Menangle, minutes south of Campbelltown, and a grass fire out of control whipped up by a stiff northerly being driven into the direction of several homes. At one stage, a cluster of homes and sheds was threatened as the fire took hold. RFS volunteers in the thick of it as flames circled the buildings. The fire started on the edge of the Baptist retirement village. It was saved as the wind pushed south. Locals chipped in with shovels and buckets on Menangle Road before the pros moved in. Their efforts saved this property, which was directly in the path of the blaze but not pallets of construction material. As flames jumped roads into hard to access farmland, choppers took over. The water bombing saved a large construction site for the Appen underground mine. Very quickly that fire continued to burn on multiple fronts and at one point threatened a number of homes off Menangle Road. The blaze stopping train services between Campbelltown and Mossvale. Up the road at Claymore, a fire at an overpass, almost certainly the work of a fire bomb. Next in Iceland. Thousands of citizens have evacuated as Icelandic fishing town as tremors and quakes have plagued the region for weeks and they may not be able to return for months. According to Iceland's meteorological office, check out these incredible images showing huge cracks in roads. The ground on Iceland's Reykjanes Peninsula shifting by several feet in recent days. A real reminder for us all of the powerful force of nature. Experts saying an eruption is likely, predicting it will take place along a nine-mile magma tunnel north of Grindavik. That town's residents evacuated and now being told they might not be able to return to their homes for months. This week, the authorities allowing them back in for a matter of minutes to grab their most precious possessions. Giant cracks in the earth running through that community. The Blue Lagoon Ge Geothermal Resort, one of Iceland's top tourist attractions, closed until at least the end of this month. Iceland sits above a volcanic hotspot in the North Atlantic, with an average of one volcanic eruption every four to five years. A giant volcanic ash cloud in 2010, grounding flights across Europe for days. In the last three years, the volcanic system on the Reykjanes Peninsula has erupted three times. Before that, it was dormant for 800 years. SpaceX, which is the world's most powerful rocket ever launched, exploded. Elon Musk threatened to sue Media Matters and those who attack X as several large companies halt advertising after they were promoted alongside anti-Semitic content. 
The launch of SpaceX's uncrewed Starship was presumed to have failed on Saturday after contact with the uncrewed spacecraft was lost. But SpaceX's owner, Elon Musk, has vowed to launch something else on Monday. Legal action against a liberal media watchdog. Musk announced on his social media platform X, formerly known as Twitter, that he would bring a thermonuclear lawsuit against Media Matters for America for what he called a fraudulent attack on his company. Media Matters has said it found corporate advertisements by IBM, Apple, Oracle and Comcast's Xfinity were being placed alongside anti-Semitic content. It's seen many other major brands, including Disney, pause advertising on the platform. Musk said in a statement that the watchdog had completely misrepresented the real experience on X and created and curated the posts to misinform advertisers and undermine freedom of speech. Media Matters did not immediately respond to an emailed request seeking comment outside of business hours. Advertisers have fled the site since Musk bought it last year and reduced content moderation, resulting in a sharp rise in hate speech, according to civil rights groups. Musk himself this week endorsed an anti-Semitic post on X that falsely claimed members of the Jewish community were stoking hatred against white people. White House spokesperson Andrew Bates on Friday condemned the endorsement of what it called a hideous anti-Semitic conspiracy theory and accused Musk of an abhorrent promotion of anti-Semitic and racist hate that runs against our core values as Americans. Stage separation. As for Saturday's launch, that was the second attempt to fly Starship mounted on its towering super-heavy rocket booster. In April's attempt, the spacecraft exploded less than four minutes into the flight. About 10 minutes into the latest flight, a company broadcaster said SpaceX Mission Control had lost contact with the vehicle. Sam Altman, the former CEO of OpenAI, is considering a possible return to the company after being sacked. Sam Altman, the Jess Altstead CEO of OpenAI, is discussing a possible return to a company behind the ChatGPT boat, a person briefed on a matter said on Saturday. And that's even as they said, he discusses with some core OpenAI researchers and others loyal to him how they could start a new AI company. The person, who has not to be named, said the situation remains fluid, with the prospects of Altman's return to AI still uncertain. Both OpenAI, which was co-funded by Elon Musk and Altman, have refrained from making any official comments on the matter. Altman was fired by OpenAI's board late on Friday in a move that shocked the tech world. Investors, including Microsoft, which owns 49% of OpenAI, are strategizing to prevent a talent exodus. Koshla Ventures, an early supporter of OpenAI, has expressed a desire for Altman to return to OpenAI, but has also pledged support for whatever venture Altman pursues next. Meanwhile, emotions have been running high among employees, with some considering leaving if Altman isn't reinstated. Welcome back. Former U.S. First Lady Rosalind Carter has died at the age of 96. For more on that story and more, let's take around the world. Rosalind Carter, the wife of former U.S. President Jimmy Carter, has died at the age of 96. The Carter Center announced yesterday that she died peacefully at home where she was receiving hospice care at her family home in Plains, Georgia. Argentina elected right-wing libertarian Javier Milei as its new president yesterday. This ruled the diocese and outsider with radical views to fix an economy battered by triple-digit inflation, a looming recession and rising poverty. Ground self-defense force amphibious assault vehicles launched from two maritime self-defense force landing strips anchored offshore and landed in the southwest island of Tokonishima, Japan. Taylor Swift fans added to her eagerly expected show in Rio de Yesterday, it's the first concert since a fan died in sweltering conditions that led to a last-minute postponement of Sunday's performance. A group is known as Djokovic East past home favourite Janik Senior to win the ATP Finals title for a record seventh time yesterday, adding yet another milestone to his incredible career. That is all we have for you on World News Tonight. Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. Tonight we are leaving you in France as tigers, peacocks and elephants greeted visitors at a Paris garden. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.